our biscuits just finished baking. I'm gonna take them out. Oh, you guys, this thing is so yummy. Like, mm. <laughs> it's so good. So let's have a hi guys welcome back to the channel I am so glad that you're watching if you're new here welcome to the family if you are already um, a subscriber you have always been on the channel thank you very much for all your support in today's video I'm going to take you along as I prepare my breakfast and we are also going to talk about the different side hustle and business opportunities that have arisen out of the trend with, of more people making over their homes and reorganizing their spaces. Time permitting, we are also going to have a conversation around an issue that recently sprang up on Instagram whereby Giraffe Manor was now welcoming Kenyans into their establishment. So without much further ado, Come on and let's go and prepare the breakfast. Today for breakfast, I'm going to have North American biscuit. And it's a very simple recipe that we are going to prepare together. And um, so yeah, without much further ado, let's get on and start making our biscuit. So for the ingredients, I'm basically using um, two and a half cups of uh, all-purpose flour which is also known as chapati flour and um, I'm using one tablespoon of uh, sugar I'm using two and a half teaspoons of uh, baking powder three quarter cup of cold milk one egg I need half a cup of butter but since I don't have enough butter I'm just gonna use a um, blue bun I've mixed all the dry ingredients here. So I'm just gonna eyeball half a cup of butter, sorry, margarine. And if you're using unsalted uh, butter, you may need to use um, some salt, like half a spoon of salt. Right? So I'm just gonna wrap this mix this in this is how it looks like and then this is our egg you just need one cold egg okay I should have <laughs> I should have, um, what do you call it? I should have first mixed it separately, but I think it's okay. Okay. So, the next step is just to add small bits. So something else I forgot to do. <laughs> you want to preheat your oven to 200 degrees centigrade. So I'm just gonna do this because I forgot to do it. So that's the first thing you want to do. So I've just done that because I forgot to do it. So once you have um, a consistency that mixes. Need the dough on a flat surface until it comes together. So once you have your dough and it has come together like this, you want to pat it on a flat surface. I want to make about eight biscuits, so I'm gonna roll out my dough to about three quarter inches thick, so I can be able to make eight biscuits out of it. So since I don't have a cookie cutter, I'm just gonna use this glass to cut them out. I 
I've already buttered my baking tin. So what I'm going to do now is just to place the uh, biscuits onto the baking tin. So this is what I have and I'm just gonna brush the top of this with some milk. You can use cream or egg but it, this helps in the browning. right now I'm gonna bake this in the oven for between 15 to 17 um, minutes so I've now finished cleaning the surface and I want to make my tea and I'm gonna make a tea masala and uh, to prepare my tea masala I'm going to use um, this is the tea masala spice um, I prefer tea leaves, <laughs> I don't love tea birds and I'm just using a regular milk and I have some root ginger with me I've just taken some little bit of water cut a piece of the ginger in the ginger with a little bit of water I just unboiled it add the tea leaves to the water which has the, the ginger so that they boil together it's just a time saving this is our mixture I'm gonna add the tea masala as well just FYI. you want to make sure that this boils a little more like it really boils well before you add in your milk I have learned over time that when you put your tea leaves and your tea masala and your fresh root ginger into the water before you add the milk, you get a more flavorful tea. And also by putting the fruit, fresh fruit ginger into the water before you add your milk, it helps to ensure that your milk doesn't coagulate or rather cuddled or what they call maziwa mala, yeah? I'm just gonna add in um, some milk. Well, those are the few opportunities that I could think um, at the top of my head and our biscuits are ready and I think it's time for us to have breakfast so come on our biscuits just finished baking I'm gonna take them out oh, this is how it looks like so I'm gonna let this cool for about um, five minutes before um, serving them and hopefully by that time our masala will be ready. So you want this to boil for a little bit more so that all the flavors can soak in. Am I the only one who prefers using tea leaves instead of tea bags? Let me know in the comments below. Our tea is now ready. Am I the only one who does it own a kettle and can't stand tea that is put in a flask? Let me know in the comments below. Sorry, the biscuits. I don't know why I keep calling them biscuits. 
and because of the milk that we spread at the top that's why they have this brownie and um, yeah I love to eat so I'm gonna have three of these I decided to make the strawberry sauce in advance so basically this is what I have here I have just um, blended the strawberry the fresh strawberry and the raspberry I blended it on a blender just put in a little water to help with the consistency I'm gonna use this as my sauce on the biscuits yeah because we already remember we already put some margarine here and um, instead of putting more butter I think this would be a very nice option Biscuits are so crunchy on the outside and so soft on the inside. So I'm just gonna put some of the strawberry. And I'll just put back the remaining in the fridge. I'm just gonna have a pixie orange and three biscuits and my cup of tea. So guys, yeah, I'm now ready to take my breakfast. And um, let's have a conversation. So I had said that, um, oh, you guys, It's so good. So let's have a conversation that we had talked about at the beginning of this vlog. So recently, I think it was on the um, about five days ago. There's um. There's this um, hotel. It will be seen it in most pictures. Giraffe Manor through the I don't know it's their PR company or what you call it. It's called Azana Anasa Luxury. Posted a um, post on their Instagram account. Well. I don't know if you noticed something wrong with it, but a lot of people noticed something was wrong with it. So first of all, it says Giraffe Manor is now open for Kenyans. So I don't know if you're reading between the lines, in my understanding. So as a travel blogger, a lot of people, okay, not a lot of people, some of my followers reach out to me and like, hey Eva, we haven't had your thoughts about this whole issue and this post alone caused a lot of outrage on Twitter and I'm so happy with how a lot of people expressed their what can I say disappointment with this brand as you can see here this post created a lot of outrage thank God um, Instagrammer Anyeko Woko had screenshot the page before Asana Luxury took it down and you can see there's lots of um, outrage on this post and there's a lot of um, people sharing the experiences of the discriminatory act, of the discriminatory incidences that they have had at Giraffe Manor. You know, you can, someone is asking what do they mean they're opening up for Kenyans? Weren't they doing that? That statement was pretty specific. Let's not make it vague here. Yeah. Pretty simple English right there. They're now open for Kenyans. Definitely means it wasn't before this post. So 
we know that the local okay we know that the tourism sector in kenya is not geared towards locals for whatever reason i don't know why maybe they think we don't have money except for tour agencies like bonfire and the like most of the local establishment do not consider domestic tourists as their target market and that's why even just by looking at the branding of most of these establishments you will hardly ever ever see a black person or anybody who looks like me on their branding material you look at their facebook pages you look at their instagram pages it's all about this i'm not black people and so when this post um, came along it was like we know you're already doing this but to like actually put it out and even write it especially at a time when we have all this George Floyd situation going along around and Black Lives Matter when I thought most brands should be really be sensitive on how they even portray themselves it was a little low-key distasteful in my opinion and um, I know that um, Safari Collection, which is like the main um, company behind the Giraffe Mana brand, sites like an apology on Twitter, and try to explain and justify that they did mean what they said. Unfortunately, when it comes to PR, it's not what you meant to say, it's the message that the audience received. I'm just rambling so much. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not offensive in what I say. And just going by the Twitter um, responses, most people were offended. Not okay. We know you don't want us in your establishment, and there's always been this movement and um, admonition that go where you wanted. But I am in my country, so you can't tell me to go where I'm wanted. By virtue of people setting up establishments here, if you don't want the people or the natives to be here then maybe you need to find another location for your establishment and there's also another school of thought of people saying hey it's a private establishment and people choose who they want in their establishment and they're trying to attract a certain brand fine that's fine i get it that you're trying to maintain exclusivity you're trying to maintain a luxury brand but in your quest to maintain exclusivity and your luxury brand, the filter should be money. Can I afford to come there rather than what your skin cut? We are not saying we want to come to Giraffe Manor. No. What I'm saying is put that option open for me. Another issue that caused a lot of the outrage is that before coronavirus um, pandemic hit the travel industry, Giraffe Mother and other similar establishments were very comfortable excluding domestic tourists from their target market. But now suddenly, because COVID is here, they're like, oops, maybe we could use these people. And um, this goes not just even just to Giraffe Mana only, but I think even all the other um, establishments in Kenya, if there's not one thing that I have learned from COVID is that you cannot ignore the local domestic market like there's no way you can ignore it and for me that has been the greatest greatest learning you cannot ignore the local market and you can take this to the bank it doesn't matter if the airspace is open tomorrow it's gonna take a while before international tourism peaks again and while it's gonna take even a lot longer to convince domestic tourists that we are welcome to your establishment the best time to start would be today and um, and this will start from branding from the social media profiles from just anything else and and, and we, we are not like asking you to bring us to your establishments for free so just going by even the um, people that commented on the Twitter. It's not like they wanted to be taken there for free. I remember like there was um, one journalist from People, I think it was People Magazine or People TV, one of the local magazines here. They had requested to go and take pictures and showcase Giraffe Manor at their own cost. And 
the PR person of Giraffe Manor had the audacity to send an email back to them. I'm just gonna take you back to my laptop and just go through that email that was sent to them. And they had the audacity to tell them that they only target luxury magazines. Like, anyway, you guys, I'm just gonna lose it, so I need to have my breakfast. I will shoot an entire video to address this issue. So, for today, <laughs> let's just have a good time. So, let me finish my breakfast and then I'll see you later, guys. Thank you very much for coming along with me on my breakfast journey. Thank you very much for the conversations that we've had. and. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye.